Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the IWF Online Wushu Classroom. Today we have Mr. Muhammad Reza Palami Nijab here in our lab zoom to instruct standard competition rules that athletes and coaches need to know part one. Mr. Nejad is a member of the Technical and Event Subcommittee of the IWF Technical Committee. Now let's welcome Mr. Nejad to start his class. Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well and thanks for attending my class. As you know, the topic of my class is Sandal Competition Rules. Uh, that athletes and coaches need to know. Let's start the class and I'm going to share my presentation with you. So Wushu Sanda competition rules that athletes and coaches need to know. And this is the first part of my presentation. <clears throat> what is Sanda? Sanda also known as the Chinese boxing is the official full contact Wushu combat style and is a fighting system which was originally developed by the Chinese military based upon the study and practices of traditional Kung Fu and modern combat fighting, fighting techniques. It combines punches, kicks, wrestling, throws, and catches. Uh, do you have good quality of video? Ms. Wan Ray, can you answer me? It's okay. It's okay? Mm -hmm. What about the video? Okay. Uh, so this is my uh, introduction about my position and uh, my duties during last year's or past years. Uh, I was technical official at most of the continental and world championships since 1993. And I was a chief referee at 2019 World Wushu Championships in Shanghai, China, and chairman of jury committee at 2018 Asian Games in Jakarta, Indonesia, and Sanda head judge for several competitions such as uh, 2016 Junior World Championships in Bulgaria, 2016 Sanda World Cup in China, 2017 Baku Fort Islamic Solidarity Games, 2017 World Wushu Championships in Russia. And also uh, I served as a vice chairman and member of technical committee of Asian Wushu Federation for 20 years from 1919 eight to 2018 and also IWF executive board committee member from 1999 to 2007 
and I was international wushu judge since 1993. Okay, long history. Let's look at the competition requirements. So we have three age categories. The first is for children and second junior and the third is for senior. For children category, the competitors shall be between 12 and 14 full years of age at the time of competition. And for junior competitors shall be between 15 and 17 full years of age. And for senior competitors shall be between 18 and 40 full years of age. So we have three age categories. And uh, so we have different weight divisions. For children, we have seven weight categories, which starts from under 39 kg up to 60 kilogram. So we have 39, 42, 45, 48, 52, 56, and 60. And for juniors weight divisions, also we have eight categories, which starts from under 48 kilograms up to 80 kilograms. So includes 48, 52, 56, 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80. And uh, for senior weight divisions, we have 11 weight categories for men and eight categories for women, uh, which is start from uh, under 48 kilograms for men to up to over 90 or plus 90 kilograms. And for women, starts from under uh, 40 kilograms up to 80 kilograms. So we have 11 and eight categories for men and women. Oh, okay, so we have some permitted and prohibited methods in Sandra competition. Uh, in this subject, all wushu, punching, kicking, wrestling, and throwing techniques are permitted to be utilized. But uh, in next page, I'm going to show you a video by Mohsen Muhammad Seifi, five times world champion. He's going to show us some permitted methods. Let's check the video. Permitted methods by Mohsen Muhammad Seifi, five times. We're going to show us some punching and kicking. Different, different types of punching. About how to kick, high kick.
Okay, now the next subject is prohibited methods. Attacking with the head, the elbow, the knee, and also by putting pressure on the joints of the opponent in an adverse direction, those are prohibited methods. Uh, the platform judge shows the gestures about these uh, prohibited methods, attacking with elbow, attacking with knee. Utilizing throwing wrestling techniques, which force the opponent to land on his or her head, also is a prohibited method. Deliberately smashing down the opponent, attacking the head of the downed opponent by any means, as well, prohibited methods. So this is the gesture of the platform judge, the penalty gesture or warning. And, uh, uh, and for junior and children competitions, it is prohibited to continuously punch the face or kick to the head. And the penalty is warning. So let's look at this video about prohibited methods. So the platform judge show the gesture of warning and the blue side received two points. And on the website. Striking with the head is prohibited. And uh, platform judge give him a penalty. Same result. Warning and penalty for red side and two points for blue side. And very dangerous method. A penalty for blue side and red side receive two points. So next part is weigh in. Weigh in, all qualified athletes must present their passport in order to weigh in. All athletes must arrive at the designated time at the designated place as set out by the organizing committee in order to weigh in. Athletes may weigh in in the nude or with trunks on. Female competitors may wear tight fitting under garments. The weigh in shall start with the lighter weight categories and continue on to the heavier categories. Each category should conclude its weigh in within a period of one hour. Any competitor who fails to weigh in correctly within his or her registered division within the allocated time period of one hour will not be permitted to participate in any of the subsequent contests. Competitors that are competing on a specific day of competition are required to weigh in at the specific time and place prior to the start of the day's event. So after weigh-in, we have drawing lots ceremony. The drawing lot ceremony shall take place after the initial weigh-in session has concluded and will start with the lighter weight categories and continue onto the heavier categories. Any category with only one competitor shall be excluded from the contest. T 
team coaches or team leaders shall draw lots on behalf of the competitors from their respective team. Uh, the next subject is attire and protective gear. All competitors shall wear IWUF approved clothing and protective gear. IWF approved clothing for men includes sandal shorts and vest, and for women includes sandal shorts and t-shirt. The shorts and vest will be of the same color, namely red or blue. And competitors are required to provide their own clothing, and this should include one set in red and one set in blue. About the gear. Protective gear is separated in two, two colors, namely red and blue. Protective gear includes headgear, gloves, chest protector, and competitors are required to provide their own gum guard, groin cuffs, and hand wraps. The groin cup must be worn under the trunks. The length for hand wraps shall be between 3.5 meters and 4.5 meters in total. For the junior and children divisions, the weight of the gloves will be 230 grams. And for senior divisions, the weight of the gloves shall be 230 grams for the women's categories and men's 65 categories and below and the weight of the gloves shall be 280 grams for the men's 70 kilograms category and above. For female competitors who are of the Islamic faith, the IWF has permitted such a competitors to wear Islamic competition attire in line with the below standards. Such a competitors are required to wear all the below stipulated Islamic attire and may not selectively wear some of them separately. This includes the following, long sleeve top, not form fitting, full length trousers, not form fitting, head scarf underneath the protective head guard, and the above stipulated clothing must be made of flexible material that is not excessively slick or slippery. For sandal World Cup, we have only uh, gloves for protective gear for men. And for women, we have headgear, gloves, and chest protector. The other items, same as regular competition. And competitors are, are required to provide their own gum guard, groin cups, and hand wraps, and the other subjects, and the other items. Now look at, please look at the competition area and the officials. In competition area, we have a main platform for competition, which we call Lei Tai, Sanda Lei Tai, eight in eight meters with two in two meters protection area. You see the red color, uh, yellow color. The blue color is main Lei Tai or main platform. And the yellow color is the protection area, two in two meters. And we have some space for jury of appeals, you know, supervision committee, head judge group, five sideline judges around the platform. And we have two space for red side athlete with coach and assistant and blue side with coach and assistant. Jury of appeals. The jury of appeals 
will consist of one chairman, one assistant chairman, and three or five members. The jury of appeals is responsible mainly for supervising the competition. The jury of appeal shall deal with appeals submitted by participating teams who have disagreement with the platform referees decisions in relation to the rules and regulation of the competition. Another group is referees and judges. There shall be one chief referee and one or two assistant chief referees. Contest judges group, one head judge, one assistant head judge, two to four platform referees group required on rotational standby, one recorder, one timekeeper, and three or five sideline judges. Two to three groups required on rotational standby. So let's start the bout. Methods and time. We have two methods in competition. If we have three or less than three competitor in each category, we follow the Robin, uh, round robin method. And if we have three, more than three fighters in each category, we follow the knockout system. So we have two methods. And each, we have three, bout, three rounds for each bout. Each bout consists of three two minutes rounds except junior events may employ one minute, 30 seconds rounds with a one minute rest in between. A bout is won by a competitor winning two of the three rounds. And uh, here is the photos of platform referees called competitors to enter on the platform. So you can see the gesture of the platform referee. Competitors shall perform a palm and fist salute when they are introduced to the audience before the start of each bout. When the competitors step on the platform, they should salute and perform a palm and fist when they are introduced. At the start of each round, the competitors shall perform a palm and fist salute from the platform towards their respective coaches, who in turn shall return the same palm and fist salute. The competitors will then perform a palm and fist salute towards one another. Let's look at this video we'll start about. Thank <laughs> you. 
So the next subject is valid scoring areas. The head, the torso, and the thighs are valid scoring areas. So we have uh, another part. We can see the valid scoring areas first. The next part is prohibited striking areas. The back of the head, the neck, and the crotch are prohibited striking areas. In this photo, you can see the platform gesture about this uh, situation and the penalty is warning. Let's look at this video prohibited striking areas. So the next subject is uh, how to, to get points and how to get two points. Scoring two points. We have uh, six items to get two points. The first item is when a competitor's opponent falls off the platform, his or her opponent will be awarded two points. And the second item is a competitor will be awarded two points if his or her opponent falls down while he or she remains standing. The item number three is a competitor who strikes his or her opponent on the torso or the head with a valid leg technique will be awarded two points. The item number four is a competitor who makes his or her opponent fall down by falling down himself or herself deliberately and immediately stands up in a flowing motion will be awarded two points. Number five is when a competitor receives a forcible counting, his or her opponent will be awarded two points. And the last one is when a competitor is issued a warning his or her opponent will be awarded two points. So some photos of this subject and items, falls off the platform, falls down, forcible counting, warning, and Look at this video, please. Reza Mosle, international referee. <laughs> also off the platform. In this technique, 
the blue side received two point. In other types of uh, falls of the platform, So the blue side received the point. Falls down. Different types of techniques. We have different and several types of falls down technique. So the blue side received the and this time the red side received two points. Kick on the torso, side kick or any other valid kick. So here side kick on the torso the blue side received two points. The spinning back kick. Spinning back kick. Or roundhouse kick on the torso. So two points for the kick. Roundhouse on the head. Same point. And in this technique, the red side should stand up immediately under three seconds. He should stand up immediately and he will receive two points. Let's look at the real
subject is scoring one points. How to get one point during standard competition. So we have seven items for this subject. The first is a competitor who strikes his or her opponent on the torso or the head with a valid punching will be awarded one point. The second is a competitor who strikes his or her opponent on the tie with a valid leg technique will be awarded one point. And the third is in, the, in a situation when two athletes fall down together, the athlete who falls down first or second, sorry, will be awarded one point. So the athletes who falls down second will be awarded one point. And this is the gesture of the platform judge about this item, fall down together. And item number four is a competitor who makes his or her opponent fall down by falling down himself or herself deliberately and does not immediately stand up in a flowing motion will be awarded one point. Five, when a competitor is ordered to attack and fails to do so within five seconds, his or her opponent will be awarded one point. The item number six is, should a competitor fail to get to his feet within three seconds after falling down on purpose, his or her opponent will be awarded one point. And the last one is when a competitor is issued and admonishment, his or her opponent will be awarded one point. So some uh, examples of platform gestures about this item, order to attack in five seconds, three seconds, admonishment. And let's look at this video the platform judge is Mohammad Nouri, international referee. So when it punches the head of the torso, when it punch on the head or the torso. Effective low kick. Red side received one point. Another type of fall down. So in this item, the red side received one point. Otherwise, he received only one point. The red side should stand up immediately. Otherwise, he received only one point.
the platform judge called an order to attack. And after that, started to counting and stopped the fight. And after five seconds, the red side received one point. The red side could not stand up within three seconds. The result is blue side receive one point. Admonishment. But the red side forgot wrong guard. And uh, end of part one of my classroom. Thank you so much for watching this part of my class.
and a special thanks to International Wushu Federation, Ms. Wan Ray, and also my colleagues who helped me to make some videos of this presentation. And see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Nijat. You're welcome. Very excellent class. And now the floor is open for questions. Uh, if anyone wants to ask a question, please raise your hand by clicking the raising hand button. You can find the button in the right bottom of the screen. Okay, here comes the question. Wait a minute. Okay, Mr. Masrua, you may ask your question now. Uh, sir, I am from Bangladesh. I have a question. Okay. Uh, in a technical position. Uh, Can you speak uh, clear and a little, bit, yes, a little yes. bit louder? Yes. Sir, uh, one component mm -hmm. uh, requesting requesting for time out in a disadvantageous position in a technical foul. Uh, in this case, I do not clear about disadvantageous position. About the fouls and penalty, I will explain for in my next uh, part of uh, presentation. So I will explain about all fouls and all penalties. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, right. I so mean, in, in I next part, you, you can see the all fouls and all penalties and the results. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, I met with you in 2016 in China, Udang Sham. I participated in international Ushu Zazan course. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good to hear. Good yeah, to see okay. you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I yes, couldn't, yes, sir. I can't see you, but uh, Okay, that's a good okay, memory. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Best of luck. You're welcome. See you, okay. see you soon on my next part of class. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you for your question, Mr. Marshall. Uh, Mr. Nijas, uh, the remainder half class is scheduled on August 14th. So if you are interested about the uh, content, please come to our class next time. Okay, any other question? Anyone wants to ask a question? Okay, if no, um, the class is about to finish and next week we will embark on the 12th week schedule. Here is the forecast, 3 p.m. Beijing time, Tuesday, August 11th, a video of Sanda basic technique, step basics will be available on YouTube, Wushu TV. 10 a.m. Beijing time, Wednesday, August 12th, a live class of Changchun for beginners, part one by Mr. Zheng Jiaojian will be delivered on this room of, on this room of Zoom. 10 a.m. Beijing time, Friday, August 14th. Mr. Nijad will come to meet us here again to instruct the remain half class. That is send our competition rules that athletes and coaches need to know part two. Thank you again, Mr. Nijad. You're welcome. Wish everyone a happy World Wushu Kung Fu Day. Yeah, you know, it's tomorrow. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's tomorrow. Happy yeah. World Kung Fu and Wushu Day. Yeah, happy World Wushu Kung Fu Day, everyone. See you next week. See you. See you. See you next week. Bye. -bye. And Taijian.